Welcome to the Super Expander Podcast. My name is Corrine Phelps, your host. I'm a business and growth coach, money mindset expert, and a multi-passionate entrepreneur. My journey has taken me all over from working in finance to owning a boutique fitness studio. I found myself burnt out, miserable and questioning everything, saying things to myself like, there's got to be more to life than this. Refusing to settle for a mediocre existence, I went all in, learning how to harness untapped potential and rewire the subconscious mind to create an extraordinary life. The last 10 years have been a crash course in self-love, building a business, creating community, building wealth, and doing what it takes to just freaking go for it. My mission is to help you align to your purpose, Rewire your subconscious to support your big dreams and vision and create a life that you're absolutely obsessed with. So sit back, tune in, and prepare to expand. Sandra Chow is a creative director and stylist. She founded the School of Visual Branding in 2018 and specializes in teaching entrepreneurs how to grow their online brands and increase their profits using visual strategy. Known and respected for her minimalist design and aesthetic, Sandra takes a thoughtful and intentional approach to design and connect brands to their customers by elevating their visuals in new and exciting ways. Through her creative agency, Sandra has directed and styled campaigns for luxury brands all over the world, ranging from jewelry, loungewear, bedding, beauty, artisan products, service-based brands, and more. She believes that divine visual branding goes far beyond your Instagram grid. It should awaken the very heart of your mission, value, and the legacy of your brand, and is passionate about teaching and sharing this with her community. Hello, Super Expanders. Welcome back. I am super excited. We have a, a real, true, authentic Super Expander sitting right here in front of me, and I'm so excited to share her with you. Let me just introduce you to Sandra Chow. Hi, Corey. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Ah, uh, yes. I'm I'm so excited to dive into all of the things here. So... I I gave you like a moment's forewarning, right? Just a moment before we hit record. And you you know, you know, we're just going to go straight for it here. So tell everyone who Sandra is deep down on a soul level. Oh gosh, that's it's such a hard one. (laughs) Um, but and I feel like this is gonna sound a little bit corny. So, you know, be prepared to cringe a little bit. But um I feel like I'm so I'm a mom of three under eight. And um, for me, though, personally, I think one of the things that fuels me and is the main thing, the reason why I do what I do, um, whether it's with my kids or in business and everything, is that I just kind of want to, I'm that person who wants to inspire people to be able to sort of believe in themselves and know that they can be whoever they want to be, but also do whatever they want to do. And I think it stems from just my background growing up, I was always, you know, told what I should be, I think, you know, or what I should be doing and was kind of pushed in that direction. And I went and did it, obviously. But then, um, like I used to be a lawyer and I am that sort of stereotype, the, the burnt out lawyer who then threw in the towel and went in in a completely opposite direction, doing something that to this day, people still kind of don't really get why I did it. But I went and did it and I've never been happier. And so I'm a big believer in sort of putting that message out there for people. And even when I'm talking to my kids or, you know, when they come to me about things like just in general, that kind of person. I don't know if that's kind of the answer that you're looking for, but um, that's kind of what I'm thinking. <laughs> Well, you know, I'm not, lo- I'm only looking for this, the, the real, real, the the <laughs> authentic truth that is today, right? Because I think that who we are deep down at, at our core, you know, it gets to grow and evolve and change. So I love that you were like, I, I want to hone in on that piece of talking about you did what you should do and that somewhere in there in the doing what you should do actually led to burnout. So what I want to really hone in on that piece was, is after living a life um, of kind of doing all the shoulds and being a high performer, because you don't end up as an attorney and just kind of, you know, glide right into that. That's a lot of work. That's like studying and school and all the, you know, a lot of, a lot of hard work. So 
what was it? What was the defining point when you were like, I'm experiencing this, I'm experiencing this burnout and it actually is directly related to me not listening to basically my truth. So for me, yeah, it, it was a lot of studying, a lot of everything. And I, I practiced for about six years before I quit. But honestly, those last couple of years was already when I kind of knew, but you know, when you know you should do something, but then it's actually just quite hard to do. And, and, and you sort of oh, can't imagine, you know, going in and quitting. I've just spent all these years doing what I've been doing. And for probably a good year or two, um, every Sunday night, I'd be dreading Monday morning. Oh, you the know, Sunday scary. Yeah, that, like, it was just that sickening feeling in the gut, like, you know, in the pit of your stomach. And, and, you know, it took me a long time to get out of it still, even though I felt that way for quite a long period. And then what I also noticed was um, I was starting to get sick a lot, you know, and then it was just this anxiety that was building up. And um, and I think for me personally, thankfully, my husband was very supportive and he could see that I was really struggling like every Sunday night or every Monday morning. It was just such a stretch. I would come home. Um, you know, after work, you know, tired and unhappy, um, I would be dreading work. I would just be sick all the time and even not going to work, which wasn't the best thing either. And just knew that something had to change. I think that was the biggest thing for me. But, you know, in all honesty, it still took a while to reach that point, though. Um, and I so I completely understand when I speak to like I speak to a lot of um, business owners who maybe came from corporate and they kind of all experience the same thing where, you know, because you've kind of been told that you know, you should be doing this or, and you know, it's, it's, it's good money and it's stable and, you know, all those things, right. Compared to being an entrepreneur and, and doing your own thing. Um, it is really hard to throw in the towel and to take that step and think like, okay, no, this is the right way to go. Even though everything in your body is telling you that it's the wrong thing to be staying in. And so that, that took me a long time to sort of realize and just make the decision and not look back as well too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. There's so, so much gold in what you are saying there. I know that some of you are listening, resonating with the story. And I feel like I want to connect a couple dots here because what you are talking about here is actually, this is like thematically for the last several months here on the Super Expander podcast, we've been talking a lot about nervous system regulation and every single thing you are talking about is like classic telltale sign of dysregulation. First of all, burnout as a result of being in dysregulation for a very long time. But this piece of like, almost like knowing you need, you can see that you need to do something, but there's almost like this invisible force that's holding you from, from moving forward. And then all these like manifestations of things like the, in your body, your body was telling you, get out of here, <laughs> don't stay, run. Right. And because then you don't listen, then we end up getting sick. So this is just like, it's just, it's like so on point for just all of the conversation. So in this, what was the piece though? So you're getting all these signs. You're, you're experiencing burnout. Your husband's like, babe, you got to do something about this. Like you're miserable. So what, what was the tipping point specifically for you where you were able to access the courage? Was it, I mean, what got you there? Yeah. So it kind of coincided like those last couple of years, I was, um, I had just sort of finished planning my wedding. And I think um, even, even like throughout schooling, I've always wanted to do something very creative, but um, my sort of stereotypical Asian parents didn't feel that the creative um, industry or just creative subjects were the thing that you should be doing. <laughs> so I just never did it. Um, and it was during that time that I kind of was able to, I don't know, I think it was just tap into those creative juices that I really was kind of craving for a long time. And it was such a contrast to what I was doing at work. I really enjoyed it. And it's almost like I found that kind of outlet. And so I was, you know, just doing that while I was working. And then um, in all honesty, I feel like it was because I felt like I found something else that could, um, that gave me a reason to leave what I had, I think. And then um I also then was having like a really bad day at work. <laughs> like one of those just, I think, you know, when you reach that limit of yours and then that, day, and I remember it was just, I think it was also partially for me, it was kind of the environment that I was working in. 
um, the culture and everything that it kind of just had this build up moment where I was just like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do this tomorrow. And then I'm going to go and pursue this. Yes. I'm going to go and pursue this, even though I have like zero clue what I'm doing. Absolutely no plan. And you know, when you have no plan, everything looks easy and it's going to be like, oh, it's going to be so great. Um, and <laughs> I, and I kind of just went and did it. And, um, and, you know, it took me a few years to really work out what I was doing and sort of find my way. But I also feel like sometimes that's kind of a rite of passage, you know, um, that you do need to, like, you can't just dive right in all the time and have all the experience. It's it's just one of those things. It comes part and parcel. And I think that comes from, you know, studying for so long and having to train and jumping through all those hoops that I kind of think like, well, okay, you know, not ideal, but, you know, it just kind of is what it is <laughs> and is the way that you go about it and gain that experience through the failures and um, the things that work and stuff. And so, yeah, that, that's kind of what it was. And I felt like because I had that outlet, I almost felt like I had something to fall back on, whereas previously all I was doing was working and I didn't have, and I was like, well, what am I going to do if I don't do this? Like, what am I going to do? And I felt like once I kind of find that, found that thing, even though whether it was realistic or not, it just felt a bit safer almost. Um, and then, yeah, coupled with reaching your limit, I guess that would, that's, that's all, that's all it takes. <laughs> that was the perfect storm. So let's talk about this, this, this thing that you just were like, I'm doing it. Yeah. Um, I ended up um, starting a wedding blog. Um, it was kind of, it was, you know, pre Instagram, all the things when, you know, blogs were quite a big thing. And I'd had sort of went down that rabbit hole when I was planning my wedding that I was like, oh my God, this is going to be amazing. I'm going to be like a famous wedding blogger, you know, all, all those kinds of things that you think when you're not really it's just all very shiny. Um, and I went into that, but then through that, I actually ended up um, meeting a lot of wonderful creatives in the industry. I was based in Hong Kong at the time. Um, and the industry was very different then. And I kind of connected with a few group, uh, you know, a group of few people who, um, wanted to change things a little bit in the industry. And then through that, I kind of, I met this wonderful, you know, floral and events designer who was originally from Germany and we were just chatting over coffee and she saw something, I guess, in me and offered me a job <laughs> as a stylist. And it kind of just went from there. It, it was very, it was very organic in that sense. But then it was also a part of it being um, sort of hungry and reaching out to people and opening myself up to those kind of opportunities and collaborations and not shying away when people reach out to you as well, too. So it was, and then it kind of just evolved <laughs> from that. I love that. I love that story. So let's talk about that evolution. Take me on that journey. So st stylist to, to where are we now? Yeah. So, um, I started doing a lot of event styling at that point. Um, I had my daughter though, when a few years in, and so I actually took some time out and then we moved back to, um, Sydney, Australia, where I'm based now. And so I had to restart sort of the business then. But then before that, I was sort of mainly freelancing. And then so when I got to Sydney, I had a lot of connections here already um, through planning my own wedding back then and then reached out to them and started, you know, styling my own small events. Um, and from that, I actually met a lot of creative businesses who were looking for uh you know, wanting to create brand content for themselves as well, too. This is after, you know, Instagram's come about. And and I actually started, ended up doing styling and doing photo shoots for them. And it coincided with me having um, twin boys. And at that point, it was kind of not very, um, what's the word? Probably like it was a bit of a logistical nightmare to work events. <laughs> so as and then another sort of natural progression, I ended up um, working with uh, a lot of brands on their photo shoots, their content, and then it slowly evolved into what it is now where I have a creative agency. I work with a lot of lifestyle brands all over the world and I, you know, <clears throat> style and design their photo shoots and execute that with my team. And um, I work also with them on things like their social media content, um, website strategy, all those things. And I also then now teach creative entrepreneurs how to grow their brands um, through visuals. And yeah, I mean, it's it's been kind of like an organic evolution over time. And it's changed a lot since when I first left and thought I was going to be this famous wedding blogger. 
Um, and yeah, but, but I love it. And I think I sort of developed the educational side of it because I, you know, along the way, I just spoke to so many people who were stuck in their corporate jobs, but had this, you know, creative passion and were, was dabbling at, you know, on it on the side. And they just felt like they couldn't step out. For me, that kind of fueled me into wanting to show people you can, I guess, and show you how you can do this for yourself as well, too. Um, and so the course is very much like this. It, it's everything that I wanted when I first started, I guess. And it's kind of evolved into that. And yeah, and I and I really love what I do now. I, I mean, I occasionally still get that, you know, anxiety, an anxious feeling in the pit of your stomach when you're working with maybe not the best client or, or things like that. But um, otherwise, I'm I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think those are just the feelings that just remind you you're human still, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> we can't let go of, of some of those feelings. They just keep us a little bit grounded and rooted in that. <laughs> ah, I love all the twists, the turns, the like the intersections of where one thing led you to another, which I think is really cool on just the self-discovery. And especially as you were expanding your exposure because into the the creative world, how it just really opened up so many different things for you. I have a question for you. Have you joined the Super Expander free mentorship community? If not, what are you waiting for? Stop what you're doing right now and text the word mentor to 202-918-3235. Text the word mentor to 202-918-3235. I send out weekly tips and inspiration to help you grow your business, to step into your wealthiest, most highest self, to harness your full potential and live an exceptional and extraordinary life. And the best part is it's really me sending those messages. So text me, say hello, and send me your questions. So now everything that you're doing is really around content and brand and, and all of that. Tell me, I, I feel like everyone listening has, has got to be like sitting at the edge of their seat thinking like, okay, this is really cool. You're creating these like photo shoots and styling them. So if you were going to give someone listening, who's like maybe an online entrepreneur building a business, what would be like the top thing that they could do to start to create a brand that kind of like oozes that no like and trust factor? Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I think one of the biggest things, and this is something that I do see a lot of businesses forgetting, and I find myself doing that sometimes as well too, is rather than putting all your eggs in one basket, looking at your overall brand like all your brand touch points, because I think, especially with, you know, all the different platforms that we we have to be on now, it's really easy to just focus, let's say on Instagram, but then that's all and well, you know, you bring in your leads and, and, and you create a presence there and you build connections, but then what happens when you need them to move off their platform, like the platform, Instagram platform and go to say like your website, um, what what happens there and what I see is a lot of dropping off there and not the, the conversion not happening because you've brought all brought in all these people but then your website looks nothing like your Instagram there's no consistency right so once that happens then you uh, you automatically lose that kind of trust factor but when someone can walk through your brand no matter where they come in from um, whether they're coming from Instagram or whether they google you and come in from your website then move on to your Instagram or the other way around if there's that consistency, cohesion across all your brand touch points, that's what builds that no like and trust factor. Um, and it goes all the way down to, you know, if someone comes and books a discovery call with you, they 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 meet you, they are you kind of like what you seem to be like, um, what you show on Instagram, then after that, you're going to send out, let's say, a, a proposal or a price guide. How does that look, you know, in compared to like, is that on brand? For, is that on brand? Like even just the look and feel, the design, the, the photos you use, everything that you use. And then once they book you, like the experience there, like a lot of people kind of it drops off in certain points. And then that's when that trust factor kind of goes down a little bit. But if everything is very cohesive um, and you're actually remembering to look from whether it's your marketing down to um, then you, then your collateral, all those things can be quite um, on brand and cohesive, then that's which builds that no like and trust factor that gets people to trust you and actually 
book you, want to work with you or um, buy from you as well. So that's the biggest thing, I think. So then here's here's the the kicker of the question in all of that. <laughs> so I get the piece of like the authenticity, right? If you're going to show up on Instagram, show up as yourself and have your website feel like you too. I, and I can see where that disconnect could happen, especially depending on at different stages of maybe when your website was was being built to like how you're showing up now. And so that there's this like thoughtful process in making that happen. But very oftentimes you hear people talking about this like cohesion in brands, right? And so what that's like with fonts and colors and um, even like the language that we use, right? How we speak. But then on the other side of the fence, you have all of these coaches telling people, don't worry about building a website. Don't worry about uh, picking your brand colors. Just show up, take messy action. So let's bridge the gap there, right? I mean, I feel like you must come up against this, right? Yeah. And I mean, I I personally always tell my students um, progress over perfection. And I think it is quite easy to get stuck in that kind of you know, wanting everything to be perfect so that, and then which kind of stops you from doing more because, you know, it's not, it's not perfect. So it can't go out there. So I think there's a lot of value in that. However, I do think when you're looking at a brand, when you're looking at um, the overall, the visual brand, you know, when you're talking about your, your photos, your fonts, your colors, all of that, that consistency, I still think that consistency needs to run through everything that you do so that people can trust you. Um, website, for me personally, I always tell my students this, I think it's a um, it's bare minimum. You have to have a website, but there are ways around it. And I think um, one of the things that I, and this is what I did as well too, when you're going through the process of updating a website, for example, or you're building out your website, there's nothing to stop you from having a holding page, a, a simple holding page that has your logo on it that, you know, oozes your brand identity, whether it's the fonts, the colors, the images that you choose for it, that has a simple statement, tells people what you do. um, And it can simply say you are currently updating your website, the website's coming soon, and then have a sort of some form of contact way for people to contact you. Because I like to look at my own buying habits, as well as um, if I'm looking for a service provider to book, if I find someone on Instagram, and that is generally where I will find people these days, I expect there to be a website. Otherwise, I, I just won't take you seriously. And that that's kind of my personal view. And I know some people mightn't agree with that. But I think like if I'm going to spend thousands of dollars on a coach, I would expect this coach to have a website or, or somewhere to send me. Maybe it's not a website. Maybe it's like you've got, a, you know, some kind of proposal or some kind of PDF or, you know, something that tells me about your services. But I would expect there to be that next thing because Instagram is a social platform, I find, for connection, for content, you know, for, for you to share content and whatnot. But from a professional level, I, I think the website is quite crucial and you can work around it. <laughs> I, I would agree. That's, I just, I wanted to hear it from you. I would agree because I even feel like there's this, it's kind of the same way as there's been a lot of, uh, you know, content has gone the way of becoming kind of sloppy, right? Like, I'm just gonna create it in my notes, and I'm going to screenshot it. And I don't even have to like, make it look nice. And just to like, and check the box of posting. And so this like idea of I get to charge these high premiums, but yet I don't actually put the effort in to create this experience essentially for you to walk through it's kind of like here's this pay link give me 20k (laughs) yeah and and I think even like even if you're a product even if you sold a product even if a product you know because you can shop through Instagram now but I will still always go to the website because you're going to see more you're going to learn more about the brand which then ultimately you know speaks to the value of what they're offering and what you're paying so if I'm going to pay a few hundred dollars or like thousands of dollars on something you know crazy um, whether it's jewelry or you know any kind of beauty product or anything like that for me to trust and hand over my credit card details to put a few hundred dollars on something, I feel like I still need to see more. You know, what you're showing me, that one picture on Instagram isn't enough for me to to, to do that. I need to see your website. I want to see more of this top that I want to buy or this dress that I want to buy, for example. It's all those things. Like it's it's kind of, you know, you need to see that sort of full picture, I feel like for me personally. And so I always go by, if I was a customer, 
what do I need to see to make the purchase? What do I, or if I'm, you know, the client, what do I need to see to make that booking or at least take that next step um, to reach out to you and whatnot? So I always think, you know, put yourself in your ideal clients and customer's shoes. What do you think they're going to need to see? And that's what you need to show them. Yeah. Absolutely. Such great advice. Okay. So now we realize that we've got to use cohesive fonts between our Instagram posts and our website and, you know, really connect the dots for people. All right. So if someone is really trying to elevate their content and like start to put things out in just like a higher level in the hopes of really bringing in more sales, what would be, what would that look like? Um, so I think you need to think about sort of going back to what we were saying before about, you know, if you're charging a few thousand dollars um, for your services, then you got to think about like the visuals that you're putting out there or even just the bare basic, like your the graphic that you're putting out there um, or the photos on your website. They have to be professional, right? If you're charging tens of thousands of dollars for your service, then I would expect things to look professional. So that might mean for you then maybe it's time to invest in, let's say, a photo shoot, like a like a personal branding shoot with with a professional photographer. Um, same as if you're selling a product. You know, if your products cost a few hundred dollars, your iPhone DIY photo is not going to be enough to um, communicate that kind of value, you know, so then it's probably time also to think about, you know, investing in a photo shoot or, you know, perhaps it's getting a graphic designer to help you with some templates that are more on brand and, you know, elevate the brand and elevate that experience. So I always um, like to look at, you know, what are, what, how do you want your customers or your clients to feel when they interact with your brand and have a look at, you know, what you're putting out there now is, is that kind of, do you think that that sort of projects those kinds of feelings? If not, then maybe it's time to redo some of your visuals and, and those kinds of things. And so I always ask um, my students to think about a couple of adjectives that you'd like to describe your brand. And when you're putting something out there, just do a simple check, like, oh, does this feel I don't know. Let's just say your brand's very happy. Um, does this feel happy? Like, would this feel make my clients feel happy? You know, do that kind of little gut check, little quick check before you put something out there. And that kind of helps you kind of create that kind of cohesiveness in the content that you put out there as well, too, or how you're showing up or, um, you know, all the things that you're putting out there. I love it. Such, such gold in here. Okay. So all of this wisdom all of these great tips that everybody's getting from you here inside of your, you know, the growth that you created in your business. There had to have been along the way, someone that was an inspiration to you to show you that the big leaps that you took in from leaving your job to starting this business, to growing and evolving and pivoting along the way, because pivots, they take bravery and courage too. So I'd love to hear a super expander story from you, someone who really just paved the way, showed you, called you up. So I'm a big believer in investing in yourself and in your business, no matter at what stage, the investment just might look a bit different or, um, I was kind of one of those people that made kind of crazy investments at the beginning, <laughs> I think, um, or when something's not working, I believe in finding someone to help you fix it. I'm kind of like a, let's work it out, let's fix it um, kind of person. So I think it was about, I'm trying to think, maybe four years into my business and it was, you know, it was kind of just trudging along there and it's not quite hitting where I wanted to hit or reaching the kind of people that I wanted to speak with. Um, I came across um, this incredible stylist based in the US. Um, her name's Ginny Orr. Uh, she was in the wedding industry initially, and I think she's now more in the interiors um, and architecture industry now. But um, I reached out to her to see if she would actually be happy to mentor me. <laughs> and so um, I, I, I paid for her to fly all the way to Sydney to come for a few days, and I spent a few days with her. Um, she you know, looked at my portfolio back then, had to think about who I wanted to reach out to. And, and she was just so encouraging and, um, you know, taught me a lot and shared so much insight with me. And even to this day, you know, sometimes we'll still message and see how, how I'm going or how things are going. And, um, and I think for me, that was, she was this person that I just really looked up to and so grateful for sharing all her wisdom with me. And so that's why I believe in also giving back and sharing with other people as well, too, because I think, you know, it's 
when you're building a business, it can be so lonely. And a lot of the times you're kind of feeling in the dark. And I started when there was no Instagram, digital courses weren't even much of a thing. So it was really, really, I think, so important to me that I actually found someone that was also happy to take a chance and, you know, and, and, and share everything that they knew with me as well, too. And so I think that's really important to give back in that sense as well, too, when others want to learn from you. Oh my goodness. I love this story. First of all, women supporting women, but also there's a really great lesson tucked inside of there because that was, took some bravery for you to reach out to someone you didn't <laughs> know and ask. Right. And I'm like, a, I say this all the time. It's like the big, bold ask, right? If you don't ask, you don't get. And I think that we need to be in the habit of making a big, bold, bold ask, like literally every single day, especially when you are in the early stages of your business. I think it flexes a muscle of just, if someone says no, right, we get better at experiencing no, because that has, happens a lot in building a business. But also, it's crazy what happens when you make these big, bold ask people yeah. say yes. Absolutely. And I remember, I remember sending the email and thinking like, oh, she's not even going to reply me. So my expectation was to be ghosted, you know, like uh, not even a reply. And when she replied, I'm like, oh my God, she replied me. That's incredible. And so even now, like when, you know, you're always going to get those cold emails, people reaching out to you, um, asking you for all sorts of things. And I always reply. I always make a point of replying, whether it's a no or a yes or anything like that. And honestly, a lot of, I've, answered quite a lot of questionable emails and they've become really great friends <laughs> and um, great business friends and we've worked together and collaborated on so you kind of just never know what your what what could potentially happen I think and so that's one of the biggest things that I that I think you know in our industry like being an entrepreneur collaboration is key building those friendships and relationships is so important so I always think like you know don't always say no you know be open to those kind of potential connections because you just never know where it's going to take you. <laughs> Absolutely. So much goodness here. Such big lessons. I mean, like in so many ways, gosh, this has been been quite the journey. So everyone's listening. They've learned so much from you. How is it that they can get in your world, that they can find out about all the things that, that you have to offer? Yeah, um, the best way would be to find me on Instagram, Sandra Chow Design. And um, yeah, drop me a DM. Let me know um, that you listened to this episode with Corey. And I love chatting in DMs. And I share a lot on Instagram there um, for my you know personal life as well as business and sharing tips all the time. So that's probably the best way. Oh my goodness. So you guys stop what you're doing right now. And as long as you're not driving, <laughs> right? As long as you're not driving, stop what you're doing right now and go and follow Sandra right now. It's super easy. Just go down right into the show notes and you can click on the link right in there and you can follow her, say hello, let her know that you heard it here. Okay. There has to be maybe like, we, maybe we can just get one more golden nugget of wisdom <laughs> from you. <laughs> oh gosh. Let me think. I think, um, just don't be afraid to show up. And I know we kind of talked about this, about, you know, just showing up, you know, for the, and, and not thinking about the other things, but I also think showing up and I, and I'm quite a personal person. So for me to show up, <laughs> whether it's on this podcast or um, on Instagram is, is quite, is a little bit pulling at teeth, but um, when I do show up and in, in a way that's comfortable for me, so showing up in, in a way that makes sense for me, um, not showing up in the way that other people are showing up, um, that can make all the difference in the connections that you make. And I say this because um, with reels, for example, being such a big thing at the moment, it's really easy to think that you've got to jump on and lip sync and sing and dance. But I'm a big believer in if that doesn't feel right for you, it's not going to be sustainable. So, you know, do it in a way that feels comfortable for you, that allows you to be able to make it consistent and show up in a way that is, I don't like to use the word authentic, but basically in a way that's authentic to you and your brand. And you'll find that, um, you know, the people that come into your world are going to be your people. Yeah. <laughs> So good. It's such great advice. And also like, just imagine when we do that, 
how much energy we save, right? When we show up not as ourselves, it is exhausting. And that's why we don't want to show up. We don't want to do it. It's hard. We can't stay consistent. And you're like, dang, if only I had just decided to just be me, this would have been a lot easier a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, because right? I mean, look, you're not, for, I'm, I'm not for everyone. I think it is, it is what it is. And I think, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. So thank you so much. You have shared so, so much. Um, I'm so grateful for all your wisdom, the time that you took to really just sit here and share so much with us here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you so much, Corey, for having me. I loved our chat. Ah, Likewise. We will catch you on the next episode. If you like what you heard, stop, drop, and leave a five-star review and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode. As always, the best way that you can thank our amazing guests is to share your biggest takeaway and then tag us on social media.